Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, checking in kind of late here on this Thursday night, February 13th, 2020, the day before the Love Day, uh, about 9.35 p.m. West Coast time here in California, taking a look at the Earthquake 3D program here in full screen. Um, shows you the last 24 hours of activity out here from the USGS 2.5 and above earthquake activity. United States looking pretty quiet out here, folks. We're seeing some older earthquake activity out there in the redder rings. The red color rings indicating uh, very close to the 24-hour period of activity. So that will be dropping off the globe pretty soon. The most recent earthquake is going to be this 2.5 out there in the beautiful state of Hawaii, out there in the Pacific Ocean. Beautiful blue waters. Uh, but that's not our main source of activity right now. I think we need to shoot towards the west, north, northwest, where we've been seeing some large earthquake activity out here, a 6.9 earthquake activity. Uh, struck off the coast of Russia out there. Um, Kurel, Kurelsk, Russia, if that's how you pronounce it, at 142 kilometers below the surface. Uh, that struck a little bit earlier today. I would actually say way earlier today. Uh, early, early this morning. Um, but needless to say, some deep movement earthquake activity occurring out there along the Pacific Ring of Fire. Uh, and that has triggered, no doubt, a, uh, a, a swarm of activity surface-wise throughout the Indonesia Islands region. You can see this line of activity uh, all the way from Fiji up through the Indonesia Islands region um, and shooting towards the west here. So... I, I don't have to point it out. It's clearly visible out here on this on this globe right here. So uh, most of that activity occurred following that 6.9 with that deeper earthquake earthquake activity. These are all pretty much surface quakes in the four to five range. Nothing major down here, but it shows the shows you the potential that a large deep earthquake can uh, trigger the surface quakes in a, uh, a different portion of the plate and that includes the, uh, the super large Pacific plate out here West Coast like I said relatively quiet out here all the way out here in the Pacific all quiet except for down here like I mentioned in the Fiji Islands and uh, and uh, all the way up through Indonesia Islands region uh, a little bit of activity off the coast of Japan as well so um, you know, it's hard to say exactly what may be triggered next, although any deep movement out there is concerning, and especially when it's in a large-scale event. So it's uh, definitely something to keep an eye on out there as we uh, head into the day or the night tonight and into to tomorrow. South America looking relatively quiet, some moderate activity down around Chile. But other than that, things calming down. Things really calming down in the Puerto Rico region. Not a whole lot of new earthquake activity at all in that region. So that's uh, uh, pretty interesting out there because we've seen a swarm of activity out there in the Puerto Rico Islands region um, over the past few weeks and uh, in the past few months, actually. So uh, pretty interesting anyway here's a closer look folks at that 6.9 that struck off the coast of Russia earlier today you can kind of see it out there uh, along that ridge along the north side of the Pacific Ring of Fire that uh, striking out there pretty deep I'm sure quite a few folks felt it though even with it being that deep 142 kilometers below the surface near these uh, specific islands I'm not even gonna name those but uh, it is out there around uh, an area where there's uh, some population, not heavy, not heavy population area, but uh, nonetheless, there's definitely people out there. So, uh, real quick, I do want to go over the changes that have been made to the channel regarding uh, the live earthquake data that I normally stream out here. Um, the program I use, the Global Earthquake Explorer program, I have received a couple emails back from it, and they stated, the developer stated, that uh, the program is no longer being supported. 
meaning that it's dead. It's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate and it's pretty sad because it's a very user-friendly, very novice-friendly um, program to view live seismograph stations all over the world. I mean, you got to open up the program. You click on the triangles that you want to see, uh, depending on what stations they are, in the locations that you select, and voila, you got a live view of the seismograph stations. But I can't seem to get it to work, folks. Um, I've tried many different things. Apparently, the servers have changed. So we have switched up to a more specific, more... Um, I guess it is kind of somewhat dynamic, dynamic, dynamic. Is that a word? Yes. I'm just not feeling it right to, right now. Type of view of seismograph stations here. So right now during the live stream, I'm going to have three specific stations that I'm watching offhand. And even though it's stating right here, these are PB plate boundary stations and they're stating unknown. I do have them marked as the specific locations you see right there on the live stream. Yellowstone National Park at top, and Mendocino, California in the middle, and um, Ridgecrest, California in the south. Now these are live seismograph stations that are continuously bringing in data. Um, the scale at the bottom is in minutes. So we're looking at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. Those are 60 minute uh, increments of data. So there's four lines at the moment on this data scale on each seismograph station. So we're looking at four hours of, of earthquake activity or seismic data activity on each of these stations here. So um, I will try to include a description on my live stream on future updates here. That way people don't get too confused on what's going on here um, there's really no way to tell any exact magnitude when earthquakes strike here I'm still trying to figure that out I pretty much had it narrowed down on my other program but uh, it's uh, like I say this this is something a little bit new to me this whole new data system this whole new seismograph view um, I know there's a couple other folks that use this type of setup but it's beyond novice it's way beyond novice for me uh it's more in intermediate to moderate type of uh, computer knowledge which well obviously i figured it out but um for the standard user it's very difficult to uh to figure out the stations and whatnot and how to get to it but uh um if you want to know more about it then give, give me a message send me a message on facebook and uh, if you're interested in, in looking at live seismograph stations here, uh, just send me a message on Facebook and I'll try my best to explain it to you. Like I said, it's a little bit beyond novice. Uh, a little bit complicated. So, But it will work for now. As far as live data goes, I can access any data station around the globe, but I'm very limited on what it can show directly on the graph here. So right now I can only show uh, roughly about three stations here on this chart, but they're live data stations and they come in consistently and they come in very similar to the other program I was using. But uh, if you want to know, you know, a little bit more information about that, I'll help try to help you out if I can. But for now, this will be the live data stations that are on the live stream here. And like I said, they are marked. And I will try to keep them, let's see if I can get that uh, right there. I'll keep them updated. Well, I mean, obviously they update themselves, but I'll keep the station uh, information updated, such as Yellowstone, Mendocino, and Ridgecrest areas updated. Uh, I like to monitor Mendocino stations because it's right at the edge of the uh, uh, Juan de Fuca, Pacific, and North American plate, that triple junction plate out there. Uh, where the uh, Cascadia subduction zone kind of ends and uh, that's that's an area I love to monitor Ridgecrest, California all, always seeing earthquake activity down there uh, with the uh, aftershocks following the July 4th and July 5th earthquake sequence and of course Yellowstone activity pretty quiet now they did have a swarm so to speak um, 
a couple days ago. But uh, right now we're looking at uh, rel relatively quiet conditions there in uh, Yellowstone National Park. So anyway, folks, um, not a whole lot of earthquake activity to report out there. Just wanted to give a quick update or I guess I could say a full update on the channel changes. Um, not something I wanted. I'm still looking at getting the uh, uh, Global Earthquake Explorer program updated. That's uh, something I've been in contact with the developer about. Even though the IRIS, which is the Institute of something other, <laughs> I can't remember their name. Um, they they said that they said that the program will not be updated. But but you just uh, you never know. I mean, there's a lot of people that monitor that station or the uh, program, and I think it's pretty important. So if you like watching earthquakes, then I do. So. Uh, anyway, folks, uh, we're going to jump off here. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I will be attempting to do updates, like I said, pretty much uh, every night if I can uh, when, when it comes down to it. And, of course, as always, if we see anything above 6.0 or greater, that's something I always try to... Uh, uh, jump up on really quickly so have a good night everyone stay safe out there and we'll chat you guys a little bit later peace